Hello, everyone. Welcome, Flamettes. Come on in. Come on in the room. <laughs> We're going to have a great show today. I'm very, very pleased that my, co- my not even Ooh, my shit, co-host, my but bad. my Lauren is here because I didn't think she was going to get here. I thought she was going to be stuck at the All-Star Listen, game. Listen, the travel gods, <laughs> the universe, somebody don't want me flying, okay? Tell it, tell it. Somebody don't want me flying. Y'all, I didn't, when did I leave? I left Wednesday morning, 7 a.m. flight to go to Cleveland because we had an event with Cookie Johnson around All-Star uh, weekend. Flew into Atlanta first because there's no direct flights on Delta from L.A. to Cleveland. Got to uh, Atlanta, landed. Mm -hmm. Two minutes later, it said my flight to Cleveland was canceled. Now, you know, I just had this whole other debacle 48 hours prior to JFK losing my bag. Mm -hmm. Flight was canceled. Mm -hmm. So I spent the night in Atlanta and came right back home. That is God telling you to sit sit my ass down. Sit your ass down. So that's what I did. I spent the night in Atlanta and turned around and came right back to L.A. Did you spend the night in the hotel? I I did. In the hotel or in the airport? No, in the... Oh, I wasn't done again. No, I was in a hotel. (laughs) I definitely called our travel agent and was like, please help me. So she booked me in a hotel, stayed there for the night and took my ass home the next day. I'm glad you're back. Thank you, the universe, for sending her ass right on back home. The dad, me and the daddy have conspired against that. We have prayed for her. Come on right on back. You know, because my dad said he didn't want me to leave either. See? So y'all shady. It was y'all fault. No, it's called brilliant minds. It was y'all fault. Because, you know, I leave next Wednesday to go back to New York. I'm sorry. What happened? (laughs) <laughs> oh, turn us down. I'm still loud. You're not loud. I'm not loud. Your it's, ears might be sensitive it's today. It's loud in my ear or something, girl. Is that better? Yeah, that's better because I was loud. Hello, Flamettes. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us. I hope you guys had a wonderful Valentine's Day. Y'all say hello to Kendall. Kendall was here. Say hello to Kendall. You know, Kendall, people be asking about you. Like, who's that man in the beanie? People be checking for you. So we got to make sure. That's Kendall, y'all. Look, I would spit on Kendall's game, but Kendall do got a whole woman. I want y'all to know that. And I she met crazy her. She's very too. nice. We, we hung out a couple times. She's Asian. That's all I need to say. <laughs> She's Asian. She will fuck you up. And you <laughs> might get cooked. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Ooh, so we have a good show today. I know we're going to touch on a couple of things that are happening in the political space, and then we're going to bring in our special guest, Miss Teresa Griffin. Recording artist, philanthropist, lupus survivor, uh, influencer, all of that. So we're going to get to all that. But what happened this week, Lauren? What happened? Well, uh, where do you want to start? I want to start with yesterday I got a teenage daughter that I had oh, to beat up and drag out my house. Wait, no. don't don't tell the people your personal I, It's too late. Baby. I already told them. Oh, okay. So, yeah, teenagers, that's all I'm telling you. If you got teenagers, I'm praying for you. Wusa, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You might need to burn some sage in your house. I need to burn the you house. Fuck cleanse, some sage. Or maybe do an exorcism on <laughs> your house. Burn the house. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, what what has happened this week? Oh, the All-Star game. Where yeah. you were trying to go to right. on Friday, well, Saturday, Sunday. Well, I wasn't going to the actual All-Star game on Sunday. Um, like I said, we had an event with Cookie, which I think it went well. I haven't really talked to any of my colleagues, but... Um, yeah, the All Star Game. LeBron won and won, you know, more than half a million dollars for his kids at the I Promise School, which is, of course, phenomenal. The gun, the dunk uh, contest was horrible. I was very underwhelmed. See, Kendall, uh, horrible, right? There was more, you know, exciting dunks in the damn All Star Game. You know what? In the dunk contest. You know what was one of the best pictures that I saw from the All Star Weekend? What? When I saw Michael Jordan hug and LeBron James. Oh, my God. That had did it for me. That's called greatness and greatness, baby. That was hot. Yeah, but LeBron's also in hot water, too, today. Child, LeBron's always in hot water. Leave LeBron No, alone. but this time is different. Did you, did you see what happened with him this week? He was giving praise to um, Sam Pressy, who's the GM for OKC, saying that he, like, scouted all this talent and talking about different players and supposedly it was actually a black man behind the scenes that really did everything. So people are really trying to come for him right now and saying he's throwing shade at Rob Palenka and all these different things. So it's uh, LeBron's back in the hot seat. So LeBron, if your seat is too warm, you can always come sit on my sofa. It's nice and just cool and mellow. <laughs> Because I'm a big LeBron fan, and not so I much of too. His, not so much of his basketball game as I am to what he does for people that you all don't know about, putting kids in college and building schools and 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 pushing blacks and single women, single mothers to do better with by and for their children. So I, that that part right there. So child, he made a mistake. Apologize like Whoopi did and get your job back. Well, I don't know if it's a mistake. I'm just saying it's controversial. You know, I love he's like I said, he's back in the news. I was watching ESPN today. He just he just wanted to steal a little shine from Kanye West because Kanye can't stay out the news. (laughs) Child, that's not shine. That's called. um, I don't even know what that's called. Kanye. That's called whooped. Whipped. That's called whipped, baby. Oh, I ain't been whipped like that since my mental health is real since my 30s. Yeah, Yeah. it might be a little bit of mental unbalance, but I think Kim must have put the Zuzabula on him. 
don't know about that. I saw Kim Point video. She don't even got the Zuzamla. That's what I'm saying. I don't know about that. But anyway, yes, All Star <laughs> Game. So LeBron won. Uh, Steph Curry hit 16 threes in the game. Oh my God, I saw it. Yeah, that. just Steph Curry ridiculous. can hit a three pointer from heaven. That child. I oh think the God. part where he shoots it and turns around and just knows it's going in, the, the level of confidence is just phenomenal to me. Mm-mm-mm. So, um, mm. overall, it was a very good game. They wouldn't let the boy re- uh, beat the record, though. I think the record was like 52 points from Anthony Davis in 2017. Steph got to 48, and they was like, nah, you're not shooting anymore. They kept oh. double-teaming him the rest of the game. But they still won. Like I said, LeBron um, won over half a million dollars for the I Promise School so congrats uh, to the team. Yeah, they played uh, really well. And then Carl Anthony Towns won the three-point um, shooting contest. Oh, who is that? Um, Carl Anthony Towns. He's a uh, he's a center for uh, the Timberwolves. Oh, okay. He also dates Jordan Woods, Kylie Jenner's ex-best friend. Oh, okay. um, he's been through a lot. He lost his mother to COVID two years ago. You know, he's really sweet. Oh, well, he's a so. he, he, he dunking him, ain't he? Uh, <laughs> can we talk about the celebrity all-star game? With my boss and you, and our friend to the show, our executive producer, Tiffany. She came through the tunnel crip walking. I love that. She came through crip walking and shut it down and told someone she was going to be the MVP. But Tiffany, I love you to death. Girl, you can stay your ass off the basketball court. <laughs> 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 Tiffany was terrible on the basketball. She was worse than me. And I know I can't shoot no ball. I can play with some balls, but I damn can't really shoot no oh good God, guy. Lord. It was so fun, though, because they were having a good time. Who was the big guy though? The tall, light skinned with the dreads, who kept dunking know. on him. Ooh, he was a. I big... didn't watch the celebrity game. Oh my god! Did you watch the celebrity game? Oh, he yeah. was fantastic. He was a big it. monster. He thrilled me. I screamed. He I thrilled like, you, and you screamed. Oh, I wow. did. I was wow. like, oh, if he was a trans man, the oh. Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> I shall not want. Okay. <laughs> well, alrighty then. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to all the charities that made money from the All Star Game. Thank you for all the celebrities that participated and everybody that raised money, all the professional athletes. Least. But can we go to the Star Spangled Banner and Macy Gray? Yeah, <laughs> I just, you know. What I did you think, Lauren? Like, that's her sound. So it wasn't the singing that I had concerned. She looked like she was a little under the influence of something. She looked like she was still in the movie for Color Girls that Tyler Perry produced when yeah. she was doing the, the debauched uh abortions baby she oh, looked Lord. good and screwy she did oh. she looked very cool clear call me now yeah i i don't know and i don't know I thir- <laughs> let me I tell think you some of something. the players were laughing too i, I, I was saw thoroughly the entertained clip. they were like la- i was they thoroughly entertained it was yeah. entertaining i mean she the sound was great i mean that's that's macy that's her sound but i just physically how she looked i was a little concerned uh so well well, let me let me say this about the Star Spangled Banner and Macy Gray and all the people who have covered the Star Spangled Banner, because y'all ain't gonna get to get on Macy Gray and y'all ain't said nothing about when Roseanne just completely destroyed the Star Spangled Banner at a at a baseball game. Who you the hell is that? Roseanne? Roseanne Barr. You didn't know that she sang. She, well, no. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> she, I'm like, when the hell did Roseanne start singing? She did it. Oh, it was a major scandal years ago, and she was terrible. I'm sure. I didn't know she had mm-hmm. vocal ability. Baby, she don't. She do oh. have vocal ability, and they took it away from her. That's why she's not <laughs> on Roseanne. Okay, so, <laughs> look, it's been a week. Uh, um, we're not going to keep you long because I and our guest coming on is Teresa's here too. so special to the show. She's out, Not only is she a flame mat, she's a, a, a recording artist. from from She's from Monroe, Louisiana, but she now lives in Chicago. She has multiple albums out. She's Grammy nominated. She is definitely a friend to you. She is a major fruit fly. And when, if you don't understand what a <laughs> low on a fruit fly is, sometimes. Am. Only yeah. sometimes. It depends no, on what fruit it depends on where fruit you are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which people Yeah, child, because some mm. And the definition of a fruit fat is a person that is an ally of the LGBT community that's very friendly with the gays. Like yeah. almost to the plus. And speaking of very friendly to the gays, before I introduce you, Teresa, let me just say hats off to Netflix and Dave Chappelle for standing their ground and telling the council culture to go somewhere and jump off a bridge because Netflix made it told stood on their ground and said it makes dollars and not cents. And that Dave just got a four a four uh deal, a four comedy deal. Yeah. Four special four comedy deal. Yeah. So great. So if this is gonna be the beginning of the end of the council culture, god damn it, I'll take it because I'm sick of y'all crying about every damn thing. It's go somewhere put think, a pamper on. I don't think cancel culture is going anywhere per se. I just don't think it's gonna be as impactful as it once was. 
Well, let's applaud Netflix for at least stick, sticking with it and not letting um, the court of public opinion run everything. Okay, back to Teresa. <laughs> you do it. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to bring Teresa in at this point. <laughs> Um, Teresa, I'm going to come and find you. Let me see if there's an easier way to do Girl, this. I was doing the coffee time this morning. I was putting my makeup on, Teresa, and we was bumping you. I bumped my two songs that my flame mats absolutely love. Teresa, can you put something in the comments? So, oh, There she is, Miss oh, no, America. She just added you. I got to go find there you. There you are. Go live. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to this show, friend lupus survivor friend to the show cook she has her own show called tea time every tuesday and thursday always on the road my friend oh she looks, looks fabulous. beautiful today yes. she <laughs> Make came some noise with makeup on for the one did. and only Teresa griffin ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Ooh, you hear those people scream i can hear them screaming uh, oh my god they're just screaming hi <laughs> Girl, you look. Hi what, there, hey what Lauren, made, hey Flame, hi, hey Teresa. Teresa. You look cute. Uh huh. She, you put on makeup for both thank me you, and Flame. Thank you so much. Well, actually, Flame has on makeup. I don't. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm happy just to see the both of you. I'm, I'm sitting here in my basement by the fire, and um, and I'm just really blessed to uh, have the opportunity to speak with you both. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Adjust yourself, and girl. I knew she was gonna tell you to uh, lean back. Lean she back a little bit. Lean, lean back. back. Let me talk to that the right titty because you know that right titty don't cooperate. That one, listen to Miss Girl. You look girl right there. She's not right now. She's trying to come out. Baby, that lady want to be seen every show. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, Teresa, you trying to compete with Flame today. It might be a battle of the titties today because Flame no. is out too. No, I, you know what? I tried to make sure. Yes, I have. This is only this much of my head and this, you know, I want to be enticing. <laughs> this titty is never right this titty is never right I love your hair Teresa I see you changed the style I love that you change it up I change mine all the time too but not as I, a little more often than yours because as soon as this show is over this one gonna get changed mine doesn't come off honey she, mine, I am, mine stays she don't I come am off. so yours don't, yours don't come off no she, okay. she, she don't move they think you got braids Lauren's hair is not braided oh no 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 it was into Miss Seely braids and then I just took them out because I didn't feel like doing my hair today so well, I think you both look cute from head to toe. Well, there I you think go. you look fabulous. You look so, delicious, period. Teresa. So, well, girl, let me listen. Thank you. Hello, Playmats, and hello, um, tea timers. Hi, hello, my tea timers. Hi, babies. How y'all doing? We've been trying to set this interview up for so, quite some time, and you know, on Love Lounge, you are not only a friend to the show, but we play your music shit every time when they don't block us on on Instagram. We play. T uh, Love Lounge, I mean, Teresa Griffin's music all the time, which is why so many of my flamettes know who you are. So what I want to ask you, starting off first, because I said you were from Monroe, Louisiana. Was that right? Teresa, your internet is pregnant. <laughs> Turn your Wi-Fi off. My internet, my internet is pregnant? Ooh, Turn your Wi-Fi off. That's funny. Turn my Why do you say the internet's pregnant? What does that mean? Because it keeps circling. That ain't that's funny. And that's usually us. That was usually okay. my That's you know, why I turned that, the That's better, Teresa. Okay. I said you were from Monroe, Louisiana. Was I right? Yes, I am. I'm from Monroe, Louisiana. Okay. Now, so what we want to know is, who is Teresa Griffin? Tell us Tell us where you came from, why Why this is who you are. We want to we hear from you. They don't want to hear my black ass. They want to hear from you. <laughs> Well, I mean, to be to be very honest, that's kind of complicated. I am. We grew up in Monroe, but we also there are four girls. So let me be clear about that. There are four girls. All of us sing. I think all of us are insanely uh, uh, amazing um, at the same time. Now, y'all, I'm at home, so my Wi-Fi should be cool. I do tea time from here, so I don't know what. You oh, know, no, what's it's great you're now. You're crystal clear now. Oh, it's great now. Okay. Okay. Somebody said my Wi-Fi had the Corona. I can read. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I didn't so, say that. Uh, so no, you didn't say it, you didn't say it, but but whoever that is, hush. So anyway, <laughs> I hope it's better now. I understand. But um, I grew up in the country. I'm a country girl. I love to cook, and uh, I love to help people. I I love helping kids. Um, my motto really is, you know, Lord, let me be a better version today than I was yesterday. Um, so. It's kind of hard to put all of that in words. I'm a work in progress. 
Um, I'm a performer, I'm a writer, I'm a singer, uh, but I'm also somebody who doesn't need somebody else to tell me what to do with my happiness and um, how I define myself and what I take, you know, in this industry, what that looks like to make me happy. I've always said it's great to be a household name, but I'm good with being able to go to the grocery store and buy, buy my groceries. Um, I am really of that set of, you know, what's a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. And in this industry, I feel like you can lose your soul. Um, I don't, if I had to have a deal that left me broke, then that's not a deal. Um, if I can't talk to my brother man along the way, then I've lost myself. Um, if I can't be a good wife, then I've failed in life. Um, because I didn't have kids, so I at least need to be a good wife. And if I can help someone else's kid because there are so many neglected kids, then I've done pretty good. Um, so um, it is complicated because, as you know, Flame, I moved from Monroe, Louisiana to come to Chicago, and I left everything and everybody that I loved in life to do this. They were the only people that I knew. I knew no one else. And uh, that's how much I had to believe in myself and step out on faith. Uh, and on what I knew would be most beneficial for my sanity. Living in Louisiana was a blessing. And at the same time, when you have three other siblings who also sing, it can be a curse because people want to pit you against one another. And that would be heartbreaking for me because I love my sister so much. I was going to ask you that because I know your sister, Mary Griffin, and she is a phenomenal singer. She sang back out background for Patti LaBelle for many, many years. But I was going to ask you, growing up in a household full of singers, was there a, because your dad sang, right, not your mom? Uh, my there, dad sang. My mama sang behind a rubber tree plant. Oh, okay. But, yes, uh, but was there a, like a, a healthy competition? Because I'm, I would have imagined that, you know, I'm, I'm, you, we sisters, but I can hit this note that you can't hit, and I can do this run, and not in a mean way, but it sometimes you the know, healthy competition puts a fire up under you, make you yeah. better. It was never about who could hit a run. Because um, you hear one do it, and um, your job was to mimic it. Your job in our house was to mimic it in another key. I mean, well, in, a, in an octave below or an octave uh, under, you know, we needed to harmonize each other's uh, runs. So in that, in that regard, if you couldn't do that, then you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing anyway. My dad was insane that way in the car on our, ride, on our ride to church, he would start singing and we needed to harmonize. And if you couldn't, then you weren't listening. And so uh, we learned to learn to musically listen, but we failed at learning to listen to one another. You, you just brought up a great point, Teresa, that I'm going to touch on. Now, you said your dad would, would make y'all sing, going to church and everything. Now, did you think that made you a great singer? Because look, look at Janet Jackson and the Janicsons, because Janet Jackson documentary just came out. And Joe pushed them. Joe, even mm -hmm. though they made it something else, he pushed them all to be greatness. So you think that your dad was the big influence that made you this Teresa Grip and your sisters, because all y'all sing. Well, to be honest, my, my father wanted us to sing together in church. Um, and so in that regard, music wise, listening to one another, we developed quite a bit just because even everybody at the damn church sang. The singers at the church were a, a, a traveling, harmonizing our Southern harmonizers. So you come from everyone so, sort of like competing on Sunday till the damn church doors need to be shut. Uh, so, you know, when you learn, when you grow up on Jesus is the answer, he breaks everything, he breaks everything, it really doesn't. I mean, your sisters, that's what you thats what you hear in your head, your program, to hear that. And then as we, because we were called migrant children, because we, my father traveled around, we needed to get certain hours in school. So we even were in school in the summertime. And all we did was school and church. That is the extent. School and church. And if you want to learn how to perform, go to church because those are the greatest liars and performers that you could ever run into in Jesus' name. In Somebody, Jesus' name. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Well, let me tell you something. We don't take all that every Sunday, okay? It don't. But it's something about when you finally get that mic on Sunday morning, and hallelujah, the Lord has blessed you with this thought that you can touch somebody. That is an amazing feeling, and you don't need a million dollars for that. You just need pastor to give you that mic. 
That's mm -hmm. what you need. And that is what we grew up in. When you got that mic, you are the star. The star is the one with the microphone, okay? Let's be clear about that. Lord. And so when my father would give all four of us the mic, our job was to drive Jesus into your soul. So ain't no damn way when I get on stage, somebody finna out saying me, because guess what? It ain't even about them. It's about Teresa finna turn it out for Teresa. I tell my musicians, are y'all ready? Because if you ain't, you need to get up off the stage because we about to fuck. We about to do this thing together. And I can't do it if you ain't with me. And that's a hard person to work for. Let me ask you a question though, because this was basically a path I, it seems like that was forged to you by your father. Was there ever a time when you were like, I don't know if this is what I want to do? Cause I know like, Hell no. Oh, okay. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> okay. Lauren, Lauren. Okay. Lauren. <laughs> Hell no. I knew I wanted to say, I just knew I had to be on that stage. It's mm. something about it. It's a drug girl. It's a drug. And what's so funny is what you said about nobody will out sing you because Aretha had that same philosophy. And you were on stage on the Oprah Winfrey show with Aretha and with Diana Ross. And they both passed you a microphone. Girl, for Aretha to pass you a mic, because you know Aretha would say, oh, she wore well, nice gowns. <laughs> well, see, wait. What Aretha did, let me tell you about Miss Miss Aretha, what happened. Um, it's, an, it's an interesting story because when you're in this business, you need to be up on your A game. And when I first came here, I I was just on trying to get a game. You know, it was, I can sing, this is what I do. And people were like, yeah, she's a great singer. So, you know, let's get her to demo these songs. It's a shame what people do to you in this industry. And they need to understand that God is watching them. You know, what? it's really how you live your life. You know, people, I want to be Christ-like. Well, live your life right. And it's really some 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 of this right here. When you want to live your life right. When you have the opportunity to help somebody, you don't take advantage of them. You pay them. If you can pay them, then pay them. You know, if you're going to give them a voice in this and 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 you're going to mentor them, then be wholehearted with it. You know, and I demoed stuff for Aretha. As a matter of fact, on the Rose album, and my voice is still on there. And they never put my name on it. Ooh. But the next time that I worked with Miss Franklin, she said, "What's that baby name?" And she made sure my name was on there. So you you want to have people who understand that it's already hard and they don't have to make it harder. You know, what I love about our friendship is the minute something happens for you, you call me and you try to incorporate me in what you're doing. And and that's really what makes great Hollywood. That's make That makes great friends and it makes a great story. But for me, it's a lifetime uh, friendship that I'm, you know, really grateful for. And, you know, I go hard for my friends. Well, what you just described is reciprocity mm -hmm. at yes. the end of the day. So, yes. So, Teresa, you do um, Tea Time every Tuesday and every Thursday, and it's on uh, E. I, I never say it right. What is it? It's E360 TV. Girl, I don't know why I can't get those numbers right. I play a lottery every day. Can't remember them damn numbers. Uh <laughs> And it's also on Instagram, and uh, it is as you do you cook and you sing at the same time. I've been to, I've actually been at a tea time, two of them, and the food was delicious. I want but Lauren to come. We I need would to have love Lauren to. In my kitchen. Lauren, I would love to. to Chicago. Yeah, but Lauren, not, I, I want to throw my loving. I would love to. Throw my loving arms around you. Thank that's you. What I, want you to I know because we yeah. haven't actually met in person yet. No, but we have got to do this because I I feel a girl friendship. You know, I, yeah. I people say I collect. I, I when I when they say oh she collect women, I love women, and okay. if I can if I can help with a hug with a I got a baby coming over as soon as this is over. It really is about us loving one another and how we pass that on. And uh, I look at you next to Flame, and I'm so proud, you know that she chose one of us. And yes, everybody, E360 TV, it's under Fresh Takes. I see my girl, Lauren, the president of Tea Time, is like, say it, girl. <laughs> E360 TV, Fresh Takes, it's Tea Time. <laughs> and that's where we are. You can get it on Roku and, and uh, oh my God, uh, Apple TV and, and, um, Mm, and and I think some other stuff, but I, I don't want to get it wrong. You need to be on uh, Clio TV. Have you uh, seen that network yet? They have like you know, it's a whole bunch of different like it's it's a black TV network. Really, Clio yeah. TV. Yeah, it comes. All right, girl. Yeah, it's like Tia Mari just has like her whole new cooking show. It's it's literally about cooking and singing. It's it's a great TV network, but it's for black folks. So I could totally see you doing that. Mm. 
So I would I would love to do that. I gotta I gotta check that out. Mm-hmm. And I, I see somebody say, you guys, I see your comments. They're going so fast. But I, I did see somebody say something about the sugar bar back in the day when I lived in New York. Um, I did go to the sugar bar and I did perform with Ashford and Simpson. But I also performed on the same ticket and shared a ticket with. I mean, you can look in Ebony magazine or Jet, and there's a photo of me there with Ashford and Simpson. They uh, back in the day in Chicago, they would rotate entertainers for uh, Chicago Urban League. They when I say it was back then, it was fabulous. It was fabulous, and it was crazy fabulous because you get to share this stage. Once I did it, I had I, I shared the ticket with Isaac Hayes, and the next time I did it was Ashford and Simpson. And girl, when I tell you it was crazy good so you guys i have been to the sugar bar and 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 i'm so proud that it was back when ashford was living Mm -hmm. and uh back when the sugar bar used to have all the broadway singers in there honey they would turn it up i'm telling you clayton bryan is on here he sings with valerie simpson now he's friends with her oh wow hey clayton how you doing (laughs) you must have met mary you met mary there uh-huh. You know, that that's where he met Mary at, and he knows that helper can sign. Well, since you're going through this resume with some heavy hitters, who was your favorite, you know, artist to work with? Oh, and, and also, at that, that, let us know who gave us you gave you your first break, because I know, but they don't know. So, oh. so. Okay. So, um, shortly after getting to Chicago, um, uh, there's an, uh, there was this organization called Chicago Music Association, uh, Songwriters Music Association, and, they, and I needed a gig because I was living in my car. And they was like, okay, so you want to come and sing? If you come and sing at this thing, maybe you get a gig. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I came, and the artist that they were, they were, um, they were honoring, his name was Jerry Butler. Now I thought that, you know, because where I come from, all I ever saw was the black and white. He don't love you, so I thought he was dead. And they was like, no, he's living. And I was like, okay, so they, I said, he gonna be at this? It's like, yeah. So you get to sing to him. Well, I've been saying I was singing to his manager to have a whole song, but they was at the table together, so you know it was it, it worked out cool. So at the end, the man offered me a job. He said uh, he came outside and he said, um, "You know, are you looking for a gig?" And I was like, "Is that a job?" And they was like, "Yes." And I was like, "Yes, sir, I'm looking for a gig." And so Jerry Butler's, I sang with him for 27 years, and it was the easiest wow. gig that was the most consistent to work with an icon that even Michael Jackson called up on the phone so he can go to Liza Minnelli with him. Jerry Butler was this, this major icon who not only worked in, you know, not only was a part of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and he and um, uh, Curtis Mayfield started out together. They threw him out of the group because everybody thought that he was trying to be the lead singer. And he went on to write all of these hits and he and Curtis remained friends until, um, after Curtis passed, you know, I think that was probably the most tragic thing, you know, outside of losing his mother was losing Curtis because they, you know, they were so great. Curtis, Curtis had gold toilets in his house. Okay. That's money. Curtis <laughs> That's money. Curtis Mayfield? Ooh. Yes. So who was your hey. favorite artist to work with? So I would have to say Jerry Butler and Bernie Mac. They, Interesting. Um, were, I love Bernie. Yeah, they were two of the most... Um, influential, laid back, you know, when I, when, when Diana passed me the mic on, um, on Oprah, Bernie calls me up, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl. Now, are you ready? Are you ready, baby girl? I mean, like literally he was this amazing cheerleader for me. He directed my first video. Um, uh, his daughter even showed up, you know, she honored me with coming to my wedding. Uh, since Bernie couldn't, you know, had had gone, but uh, that was two major, two men who basically always gave me a gig, hmm. and it didn't matter what I did outside; they didn't block me. They let me come back and work with them. I never had to worry about work because of them. It's interesting wow. that you said two men. So, have you had issues with female artists in the, in the past? Don't name them, but have you had issues with people? And you know, all across the board, across the spectrum, black, white or Hispanic, whatever. Let me say that I, I loved, I've, I've worked with some, some two great women. Um, uh, I worked with Diana Ross and that was probably the most surreal thing ever to happen in my life. If I have to say the most gracious person, I, I would have to say that she was because she didn't know 
anything about me except that I learned her song before the um, before the broadcast. You know, before we we were going in to rehearse with her, and I wanted to know what was we sing, what we were singing. I didn't want to get there and be unprofessional. I wanted to know. I didn't want to learn on the spot. I wanted to be my best, and so. Um, I asked them what was she singing, and they told me. So when I walked in and she started singing the song, like, okay, y'all, we get ready to sing the song. And she walks over, only love can conquer all. And we're supposed to come in, only love can break down these walls. And she looked and she's like, you're the only one that know it, huh? And for the rest of the day, she was messing with me, calling me Lil' Kim, all sorts of stuff, baby. Because I was, you know, I was, you know, ready. And I was ready. And so um, the next day, I had a different wig on. She said, I like your wig. And I was like, thank you, Miss Ross. And then she said, if I give you the mic, would you be ready? And I was like, yeah. She said, psych. Oh. <laughs> she <walked out>. <laughs> 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 Only to end up passing me that mic anyway. Right. And, she was checking and, you, yeah. And uh, And it was just working with her was surreal you know that was a very surreal gracious beautiful moment that i couldn't have asked god to tailor any better and so my manager has always been god he hasn't steered me wrong yet i'm not broke mm. i'm not hungry say it and, say it <laughs> damn it i mean and, you better say it again yeah and so and because of that you know my fans stick with me they bring their kids their kids become my fans um i i I will always give back, and that always gives me younger fans. Those young people that I've given over 6,000 trunks or laptops to, they call back, they hey, Miss Griffin, y'all need some help. We helping out this time. And that is the best life. When I look back and ask God, you know, if you got something else for me, I'm ready to do it, but I want you to be pleased. And so as, I, as we walk into this next phase with all my friends being so blessed, you know, flame. Uh, <laughs> as, I, as I watch your blessing and uh, and I see that Tiffany is playing it forward, you know. Uh, so if I could do anything for Chicago artists, I would tell them reach back and get somebody else so Chicago can grow. That's, you know, and that's the thing that's not common for Chicago. You know, people oh. make it out, but it's not common for them. Yeah, well, we you have... guys have got a couple of people that do give back. Yeah. I got to tell you, you do. You do for sure. You guys have like Chance the Rapper and you know G yeah, Herbo. You guys have, yeah, yeah, you guys have got a couple of people that are reaching back to make the city better. Uh, for sure. Kels gave but, back. But, Kale, uh, Kale's gave back. He gave you know day. For, uh, he gave day for day. <laughs> you know. I'm just gonna say it's your world. <laughs> Oh, let me stop cutting up. Teresa, so uh, we know you're a philanthropist. And what, you, what when she said the trunk parties, what you all don't know is that Teresa has these trunk parties. And you have them a couple of times a year, right? I actually have them in different states. So I know St. you have them in different states. That's why I said, but a yeah. couple of times a year. Yeah. Where she but donates. no, I do, it one, I do it one time a year. But oh, we, okay. we collect all year long. We do fundraisers throughout the year. We try to actually get more chapters to do it because I think anything that's telling kids to love themselves, you know, you, we should tell them that because for some reason they, you know, they're at a point where they, they work hard at not loving themselves. Hmm. So what, you know, what can we do to, to help them really feel like no, nobody thinks they'll discover the earth because they, I think they kind of come here thinking they're all that. And then somebody gives them a reality check and they realize you're not. And, and that's tragic. You know, at that moment, it's everybody else's fault except theirs. And owning that responsibility is difficult for them. And, and here we actually say, go on and make your mistakes. You're going to make them. I'm going to watch you make them. And when you finish, I'll be here. You know, you give it. You give me favorite auntie vibes. Mm -hmm. You do. You give me favorite And you know vibes. what? I am the favorite auntie. I know you are. I can tell. I know you are. For sure. Teresa, you think, <laughs> let me ask you a question. You think that um, because you have, have no children of your own that, that's why it's so important for you to cover it because you cover so many children, mine included, because, you know, my children adore you and Zeddy sings with you and everything. So do you think that's why it's so because Tiffany has that same philosophy. She has yeah. no children. So all the children are her children and she does so much for kids, which needs to be you know, more people need to do more things for children. But is, you think that's why you're so close to kids or why you try to help so hard? 
Yeah, I um, I I just didn't want to drop a whole person out of me. Um, <laughs> that's I feel <laughs> that. Whoa. You know, I just thought, who Ooh. in Jesus' she name came up with? Who came up with this drop a whole person a out whole of you? A whole human. Ooh. A whole human. First, you get to carry it, you know, and then your hip get wider. And I already got to say, like, and then your hip get wider. <laughs> And, and I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm like, who, the, who came up with the punishment for the woman? Because then after you do all of that, they got to call you mama. They nurse on you. And then after that, you're supposed to like for the rest of your life be called not your name, but mama. And I just, I, I don't, I don't know. I, and maybe later on in life, I'll be like, damn. I should have, but I hope I make up for it. I hope all of my little nieces and nephews be like, we got to handle up and take care of mama or Aunt Teresa or whoever I'm going to be at that point. But I just, I couldn't, I didn't want the responsibility. And some people really should think twice before they do it. Period. That might be a little triggering let, let for get, Flame. Let me get close in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> might be a little triggering. That's oh a double. That's a double autonomy, though, because you said you some somebody calling you mama, and they got the breastfeed. And if you get the right man, he gonna call you mama, and he gonna breastfeed off. I'm just saying, it's a well, double. Guess what? Uh. I said. <laughs> let me tell you. The women have described to me the nursing process, and that ain't like that somebody sucking on your titty. That's some other thing. They getting food out of you. It comes out. Your breast gets sore, even worse, because you're gonna keep filling them up with milk. It's a whole nother thing. You look, you're like Moose City Cow for this baby. Yeah, I can't, I can't yeah. hey, hey, man, mama, Bessie, come on here. I'm, I'm hungry, mama. No. I'm not going to put all my business down the street, but I, I, my mother did breastfeed me for a long time. She did. And I'm not going to put my business out on the street, but Lauren. yes, it was a while. Okay. It was a while. Okay. Yes. I can tell. Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> But, I hope that's supposed to mean whatever. You know what? But this is the good thing about children who have breastfed that I have learned. What, because of that process, they say that the child, you know, is closer to the mother and, and you know, there's a bond that forms. Um, I'll never know what that is. You know, that I will never, ever have that experience. And sometimes I say to myself, Teresa, you're such a freaking punk. But then I, I have to, but then I'm honest with myself and I know that I would not have made a great parent, but I make a fabulous, amazing aunt. And so I, I think the child deserves more than you just wanting one. You know, you have to, you have to understand the whole process. And for me, I just, it just didn't balance out. That's real though, that you kind of made that yeah. realization. And yeah. it's almost like you just chose not to be selfish in a way. So, you know, yeah, I had to, you know, because, you know, kids get hurt. Yeah. Uh, even even when you are being the best parent, you know, kids get hurt. But I'm on the road a lot. I travel a lot. Look at this. 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 I'm laughing at a comment, Teresa. Somebody, no, Charles, I'm laughing, so, at a comment. laughing at a comment. Somebody said, I'm so damn hostile. It was a joke. Y'all, ooh, y'all read into the most random things. Oh, they, they read Christ. Lauren's face. I'm telling you, they sent me inbox. They swear that Lauren be sad at me. Right. Like, I'm like, well, she do that anytime. It don't matter whether we're on the show or not. She people don't understand. <laughs> I have a chronic disease called RBF, child. Y'all are just, ooh, I have resting bitch face. I can't help it, y'all. I'm sorry. It's just my face. Come back, TG. I don't, know why y'all be, I don't know why y'all be trying to be, have Lauren at me. Lauren, right, like, me. Lauren talked plenty of shit to me I off do. camera. Y'all have no idea. <laughs> Girl, y'all have no idea. fight so badly. My goodness. Oh, that's right. She, Teresa, you a Leo like Her. Lauren. Are you? No, I'm a Virgo. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, it's, it's right next Woo. door. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to say that because Virgo women are very different from Virgo men. So. Anyway, let me yeah. Anyway. And for real though, in real in real Jesus life, <laughs> Virgos are in real Jesus life. Virgos are excellent people. Okay, we are excellent. We strive for excellence. That's a problem for some people, but we ain't gonna apologize for it. Well, Woo-hoo. two of my best friends are Virgos. I'll I'll give you that. It's it's the Virgo men. Woo, needy people. Who ain't so needy? Mm. 
Anyway. D lady, they talking about you. <laughs> Teresa, I want so Teresa, I want to get serious about it, Mom, because I love that you are so transparent and you're so open about even when you have health chronicles and woo woo woo. And so when you first exposed told me because you're so public about it. So I'm don't don't y'all think I'm telling her business. This is my oh. friend. And she has talked about it openly on many platforms about her lupus and her battle with lupus for many years. Was mm. that one of the harboring reasons that you did not decide to have a child or you just really mm. didn't want to have a child because of fear? Oh, no. Um, actually, at, after I got married, I was very clear that I did not want to do it for, for certain. Um, my husband, as you know, is excellent. And, yes, he is. Um, I love it, John. And when we were dating, okay, so now I'm telling my business. I'm going to tell my business. So when we were dating, um, John asked me, and we dated eight damn years. Most of the time, no one knew we were dating. We were very, very discreet. And um, when we started dating and things started to get serious, Mr. told me he didn't want no kids. And my answer to Mr. was this. Put it in writing. Because I don't want nobody to show up if we decide to get married to the door talking about he my daddy. And 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 it, so I, so I, I, can, I can hear this one already planning that period, same poop. shit. Oh, oh my no, god, period, I can I know this period. helpful. I can no. feel her. She Listen. gonna put that same thing to whoever marry her. <laughs> Listen, no, because Flame makes fun of me sometimes because I always say that. Marriage, yes, it's about love and, you know, finding your soulmate, all that hoopla. But that's a business contract at the end of the day. You're entering a business agreement with somebody. Your finances, you're taking on if they got a lawsuit. Like, that's a business contract at the end of the day. So I feel that energy. Put it in yeah. writing. Absolutely. I don't want nobody thinking they come to get none of my coins. Exactly. Oh, so if you're good with it, so am Don't I. look at me. Because I'm married. guess what? <laughs> I don't want to get up either in the middle of the night to go feed nobody. So if you're not trying to get up, neither am I. <laughs> this, this, we in this together wholeheartedly. And it ain't going to be Teresa running nobody to school because Teresa daddy took her to school every day. Mama did not. So daddy, you need to get up and take that child to school every day. Mm. Not Teresa. We did. We are not going to start that. Teresa get tired every day. That's not going to happen. Kids are not fabulous. I don't care what nobody say. That's a job. Puppies are fabulous. They cute. They a job but too, people, though. Oh, they a job, but let me tell you something. You ain't gonna have them that long. Cuz go to therapy and to Stop telling class people my dog and, is in and he productive. Take, he eat yogurt and shit. Yeah, hold no. on. <laughs> But can I be honest, though, what my dad did, one of his friends told him, because I wanted a dog really badly when I was younger. And my dad was like, I'm you're not getting a dog. And his friend told him, do you want her to be pregnant at a young age? And my dad was like, well, of course not. He said, get her a dog. He was right. Because that's like right. having a damn kid. It is. All and day, you got two of all them. Day. Every day. Gabriel is at a sitter no, right now because daughter. I didn't want him howling I'm in the middle sorry. of this year. Gabriel would have been howling and carrying on and had to pee. So I had to send him on over. People know I take great care of my furry children. Oh, yes, no, no, you no, do. No. Stop. 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 You do not. You, just like this heifer, you're anal about your damn dogs. They got life insurance and, and, and pet they, insurance. They got, Absolutely. baby, they got all, they have bar mitzvahs and, and, and Christmas parties and shit for yep. the dogs. I love people that love their pet. I love my pet, too. I just spent $500 on his ass, and all he had was some hair in his ear. So that's a money-making business right there to have a pet and adore it because people know that you're going to love your dog. But y'all, y'all, to you, me, you, and, and, and this one right here, Lauren, y'all are possessed about y'all. But dog. Un, that's but my kid. But understand this. Understand. If I had a child, I would be, that child would be a wreck because I would drive it insane. I would want to know who touched it today, what happened. I would be worse. This dog, this furry child of mine, is perfect. He's a furry baby. We He needs therapy sometimes. Y'all seen how he acts. He, he got a nutty. My dog's not in therapy, though. <laughs> She's not in therapy. I always tease Stop the Stop telling people that my damn dog therapy. is in therapy. <laughs> you know, Gloria said her children are precious and they are successful. So am I. <laughs> Until but, they get to that great getting up yonder, mine are successful too. Michael Michael Jackson, you know, uh, he had so many fans. We had 52 uh, 
arrangements when he passed. He must have touched somebody, okay? He, he did his job when he was on this earth. Gabriel, I mean, he they doing their job. They make people smile. They make them laugh. When I walk in the door, sometimes he mad. He, he cussing. I don't know what he really saying, but, you know, he's <laughs> saying something. He, he getting it out of his system. We, we, we understand one another. Me and a kid, shaking baby syndrome. That's all right. I'm in jail. So, Teresa, what's next to you musically? Because you got nominated for a Grammy, right? Um, we were up for the nomination of a Grammy. It's a process to it's, get it's, you know, yeah. that. It's coming. And, it's and coming. so I hope so. This project that I'm working on, it's really a movie. The the CD is a movie. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to shoot the movie and the CD and have it all out at the same time. But the, the CD is a movie. And um, it's it's about, you know, the last CD almost was a damn movie. Because I shot all those videos and they connected to one another. Um, it was my thought of trying to to make this movie, and it really is about the life of a black woman. Hmm. And um, there's a song on there called "He's Mine," Ooh. and and how we can be possessive, but at the same time, you remember every step in life, how it took you, how you got there to that moment and uh if i can show that you know in film you know because my life is very complicated i have trans girlfriends i have gay male brothers you know i have beautiful black sisters and in this life you get all of that you know you you get all of these things and because it's complicated love is complicated you know it's it's my vision of love that's what my life is, is my vision of love. And that's what this project is about, how you get it in all different packages. But I need that love. Okay. And if you can't accept the packages coming in, how I can't have you in my life, how you make this complicated. So, and it really ain't all So you're going to make this, so it's not going to be just a visual album. It's literally going to turn into a whole movie. It's going to be a whole movie. It's kind of like... Yeah, you better, um, okay. Mm, yeah, it's a. I can't. I can't tell you what it, somebody else might be messing with. You know, uh, you're right. Copyright. Copyright Lemonade. infringement. It's okay. Yep. Nope. So Teresa, yeah. what 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 is your favorite CD of yours? Because people, I'm sure artists have their own favorite CDs. Unless you Lauren Hill, you only got one. What is your favorite? <laughs> but it was she only needed one after the miseducation alone. She only needed one. But what is your favorite CD? My favorite CD that I have would um, have to be the very first one. Um, because it was my first try and, um, and I fell in love with the fact that I, I knew I could do it. And so it was an EP and it was called Songbird. I went to New York and had somebody put me in a fucking bird cage and shoot me, you know, cause I wanted to be a bird, a songbird. And, um, I think every, every journey is beautiful, but my first journey, the First, very first CD, I ordered them and we did an assembly line to put them together. And uh, and the song for you was on that first CD. The Donny um, Hathaway song? Yes. So yeah. wow. a song for you, because I'm Chicago, they had a huge contest in Chicago radio, V103, and they had all these artists singing, singing. It was a big contest. It went on for a long time. Teresa Griffin won the, won the contest singing a song for you, and it's about eight minutes, and every tranny in the country have done the song. She ad-libs, I, except for me. It's too many ad-libs. I can't even learn the words to my damn script. And I'm showing you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so phenomenal, and that's really what blew you up in Chicago. And then they kept Herb Kent, the late, great, may, may he rest in peace, our friend, Herb my Kent. My great friend, yeah. Would bring Teresa on, and Teresa would do the Sunday show with him, and she would sing, and Chicago just fell in love with her. But my favorite CD, and all my flame mates know that my personal favorite CD of yours, because even though I love what you did with Distant Lover, you remade Distant Lover by the late great Marvin Gaye, mm. my favorite CD is still, and will always probably be, no matter what you write, because you write your own stuff, is My Naked Soul. Is Naked Soul is my favorite, because I got some songs on there that just, oh my God. Let me tell you, before we get cut off, <clears throat> let me just tell you, My Naked Soul took so much out of me because I had so much against me. And I used to write, when I'm really writing, I write on the walls. So I have a designated room in the house where I just write on the walls so I can 
so I can see my vision and write the song lyrics out. And, you know, this is my insanity. So, um, anywho, so that CD, people radio dogged me about how nobody's going to love the CD. And why do you have a piano song on here? So <clears throat> somebody sat me down and, and God rest his soul, Deidre is gone now. Deidre said, Diva, you're always ahead of your time and somebody will always do it after you. And, all, and it'll always be this thing that that person captured this and that. And he said, but you're ahead of your time. Keep doing what you do. Somebody else will find a genius and you will still live your life happy. And it took me a while to understand why he said that to me. Then here, 10 years down the road, uh, let me say, I went to South Africa, performed wonderful, you know, over there, Europe, they loved it. Came back 10 years later, radio decided to start playing the song Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I got so damn tickled because by that time, the damage had been done. Mm. You know, the, the damage here and here had been done. You know, people saying you need to lose weight, you need to look like this, you need like that. And then here comes the girls buying titties and ass and my titties and ass was a problem. And then, so I came to this revelation once I, I wrote the song Better Love Yourself, but I, and I used to have my kids and I'm like, this is why I sing this song. But I had this moment when people started to play it 10 freaking years later. And I just was like, these tears I'm tasting, drowning in a sea I've cried. See, I'm foolishly waiting for love to save my life, but I, I better love myself before love lets me down. And that was my connection. You better love yourself where the hell you are when you are there. Because people, you waiting for them to okay you and say you mm -hmm. are great. Mm -hmm. You will have wasted your life. When wait, you really waiting on somebody else. Moment. Thank you, Teresa. And you Ooh. cannot wait on anyone else. You must say in that moment, I am great. It's okay if you're not here with me, but I am great. Look mm -hmm. at what God made, you know, because somebody else is watching you and you don't know, you know, when this other singer starts saying, man, you just kept doing it. You just kept doing it. And you never wait on nobody because the God I served did not tell me to wait. This is my life. Mm -hmm. And if, if I am 65 and somebody figures out I'm amazing, good, glad you caught up. I always knew this. Hmm. I'm not going to let somebody else's numbers keep me from knowing I'm fabulous. I live in a fabulous home. I own more than one. I'm defining my own purpose. And I'm not sitting up worried about how I'm going to pay my rent or my taxes. Or It's okay if you believe in yourself. Ooh, say Step it. out in your faith step out in your you step out in your no do what makes you happy don't let nobody snatch it from you tear you down make you feel bad if you run into somebody that wants your ass instead of your mind Ooh. if you okay with it then it's okay if you're not okay with it and walk away don't live with regrets talking about if i could have should have would have lord if i can can i what if somebody i'm waiting on somebody to get i do not wait W-A-I-T is not for me. G-O-D is because I got to be good all the time, baby. I cannot be messing around. I'm always going to be on time. And that's what you got to get through. You better love yourself today. And I wrote it 20 years ago, if not more. And I knew then I needed to love me. I know even more now because I heard it that I got to love me. Teresa, let me ask you, did you have or have you had any regrets with anything that you've done in your career? I mean, you literally just gave this phenomenal testimony about self-confidence and loving yourself and knowing, you know, basically your path and your journeys for you. But has there been anything in your career where you've kind of said, mm, maybe I wish I should have done this differently or maybe I wish I had a little more confidence at this point in my life because, you know, the older me could have told the younger me this, anything like that? You know, I have two regrets in life, and I'll tell you what they are. One is that my father and I had a disagreement, but I learned the lesson, and I did get to apologize before he passed. Didn't last long. It was just, he did take my car, and I was here by myself, and I was mad as hell. But then he told me, baby, I said your word is your bond, 
And then that all you have is your word. So I understood that and we cleared that up and I apologized. Uh, the other thing was I met Harvey Fuqua mm. and um, he wanted to work with me, but I was so fearful of what that meant. And um, I often wonder what that would have looked like. Um, at the, at the same time, I, it was three different deals and I, you know, didn't understand who he was. And now I make sure I know who people are. I didn't even understand what, you know, who he was, because for me, you know, I'm, I'm, I was walking into a business that I was totally blinded by and I should have, uh, done my homework and, 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 um, I, I did work with him after that. And one day he said to me, he said, you know, it's good that you followed your own path because you never know what would have happened. And, and, and some things happened and I don't know what those things were, but I also met Antoine Fuqua's mother and she used to talk about him all the time. And I had no idea what he was or what that meant because I've never been impressed by names. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've always, if, if my heart, you know, is there with that person that I've been good. Um, I don't befriend people because of who I think they, you know, what they can do for me. Um, because I think you get in trouble there. Um, that, that was a time and a point where I, I, I met R. Kelly and he'd offered me um, to come and go on tour with him, but I just didn't feel in my heart that's where I needed to be. And, um, and so, I, you know, that was the only time in business with, Harvey Fuqua that I ever kind of, you know, it's like Teresa, do your homework, but I, but I'm okay with that decision. So it, it doesn't just sit there, but that was the only time I ever questioned everything else. I've been, I've been very okay with knowing that I made the best decision for me and screw everybody else who thought that I was crazy and hard to work with. I don't, I don't really care about that because usually that just means that I did something right. That was a great um, uh, synopsis of it, too, about n the names, knowing who the pe person is, because Lauren be on me about that all the time. Sure because do. She's like, you, you don't know who so-and-so is? I was like, uh, no, do I need to? <laughs> do your research. But it is, it, is very, it is very true, Therese. And I'm glad that I have Lauren in my head and in my ear, even <laughs> when I don't be wanting to hear the shit she's talking about, to say, friend, yeah. you need to do this. This is so-and-so. This will be important for your career. So I get that. So that is understandable. Secondly, you said something else about something. I just lost my train of thought. What you, you said something about after that you, you mentioned something um uh, i met antoine fuqua's um, mother and you know and and that was me you know being on the road with jerry butler i met people it was but I, I yeah but my regret um, is, is definitely my one regret was you know me and my father having a disagreement yeah. because that's my dad that made that touched me because yesterday i told you what happened with me and izzy uh, and i'm hoping that me and my daughter can come to a common ground she got my mouth and her mama's hell so i'm kind of doomed but <laughs> but i think i mean even i'm, I'm no, not gonna not. touch on that fully but you know but i sometimes what i try to tell flame too it's okay to walk away from things because we all know that like flame loves really hard and i get that vibe from you too but sometimes you need to sever ties and love people from a distance. And I honestly, and that's something that I've gotten from what you were saying too as well, is that what's supposed to be for you is for you. And mm -hmm. it's not good to force certain things because you think that's where you're supposed to be mm -hmm. in that you know particular yeah. space and time. Yeah. So, um, well, people will make you think that people will have you thinking, this is a great, you know, this is so-and-so you should, this is so-and-so and this is, and then, and, but I've always been like, I don't really give a shit okay. who that is because I don't feel good about that person. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I'm glad in most instances, you know, I followed my mind, you know, when it came to, but I, I try not to make abrupt decisions because I don't want to piss people off either. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 I agonized over whether or not to work with Mr. Fuqua because I was already working with Mr. Butler and because I was working with, you know, some other people and I did, I agonized over the decision. So I didn't sever that. I don't sever ties with people unless I let God do that. But if I see that you're trying to hurt me, I have no problem saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. You know, I can tell you goodbye. This doesn't work. You know, this, this, this doesn't work for me. It doesn't mean that we're not cool but it doesn't work for me. I always try to make sure I leave that window there. But if you cut me and I know you cut me, I can sever that tie 
and I cannot speak to you until I need to. You know, if I'm in public, I will never treat you badly. I will always say hello. I will never do that because I'm a lady. But I don't have to take you home with me. You can never be in my heart again. I am very clear with people about that. And some people hurt you to the white meat. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to your children, that's a whole nother thing because that's the only one for the most part you never want to sever ties to. And that hurts. So, you know, when it comes down to parenting, that's the other part of why I didn't feel like I would make a good parent because I can cut you off. My, my family knows if you, if you hurt me insanely, you can call me and I'll be there, but I can cut you off. My mama was the same and one. You need to, you need to be in a, you need to be in a mode where you can forgive, but you don't need to ever be in a mode where you're abused. Mm -hmm. So you can give and not be abused. I can, I can be that staff that you lean on, but I cannot be the staff that you break. You know, that's what I have to be clear with the people that are around me. And I'm, because I'm constantly learning. Someone asked, can I still learn things in my craft? I can still learn things across the board. We all should be learning and thinking people. If we're not, and you know everything, then you're God. Hmm, and I don't think any of us that, you know? Well, in your own words, I ain't no lady. If you cross the line with me in the streets, wherever we at, I'm cussing you straight the fuck out. And if you want to get scrappy, bring it. This is West West Sorry, Chicago. But Teresa, here's <laughs> this gonna come from this gonna come out of nowhere. With all the singing that y'all was doing and all the churching, when did you find the time to learn to cook? Because what people don't know is your ass could write a color. You could be a culinary chef because you're such a great cook. Where was the time with all the church? Uh it's called Mommy them ain't got no money. They don't play like that. Go in the kitchen and cook that food. <laughs> so, Straight up. But you watch, you watch both of my my father was great at, at grilling. He was he was the barbecue king in our house. And, you know, that's who did the grilling. And his church would come over and he would grill. So that was Reverend Griffin. But my mother had to learn how to cook because she was so much younger and he taught her a lot of things. And I would pay attention. And then we went to every elderly person's house in my father's churches, churches, because, you know, in the South, they can oversee over more than one church. Mm -hmm. And the older people could bake, they could cook, and you could, if you sat and shut the hell up, <laughs> you could learn. They would tell you to pass them this and pass them that, and you watch, and I watched. And then this palate, baby, you know I'm a thick girl. That right titty is <laughs> the right titty. The palate, the palate, I know that I want lavender with lemonade, you know, I, I know how I want things to taste. So it, I know if I put this cream with this spice right here, you know, you can put cream with cinnamon or you can put cream with a really serious spice and, and add. And people don't even realize that cheese has a different flavor in it. So every piece of cheese that you get is going to taste different with this with this heavy cream. And I love that. And I love what you can do with it, with meats and vegetables. And it's just a love of mine. You know, and plus yeah. I want to be a great wife, so I want to feed him something different. That was my experience, though. When I turned like ten, my mom said, "I'm not cooking for you anymore. Go figure <laughs> it out. There's stuff in the in the freezer. Go defrost it. Figure it out. You watched me for ten years. Rest, figure it out. Rest in peace, and that's Ms. how Mark. I learned how to cook. She I was, did. I had to figure it out. It was funny. You just said that, I'm, I'm, and I, I don't want to even bring this up publicly, but I'm going what? to do it. one of my store on my. You know how the old pictures pop up today? Yeah. Two years ago. Uh, the old picture popped up of a picture of me and you and Miss Marsha. No. And uh, I saved it. I'm going to send it to you. I was going to send it to you before the show, but I didn't know what kind of mood it was going to put you in, so I'm waiting yeah. after the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, while we're on, let me just say that 1906 Alpha, a lot of the women, Gloria Wilmer, I've seen Penn, I've seen a lot of the names. I just want you guys to know I'm trying to read your comments. I think you guys are absolutely amazing. I love the way that you support Flame, and I, I really think that this is a beautiful show, and you have insane love. Hi, Insane to Boot. That watermelon cake recipe, thank you. And I love that you stop by and you visit me. I, I want to challenge you today to do something and feed somebody else. That's that's what I want you to do. I If I could do anything else, I would feed I would just, if I could just feed everybody, that would be, oh my God. You mean just like imagine. actual food or feeding people in love, knowledge, you know? I want, I want you to feed them. If you see somebody hungry, I want you to feed them because 
when I lived in my car, I was hungry. I, 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 I had one back in the day, you have a sub sandwich and they would cut it in half and you have some fries and they give you that pop. And all of that was like $4 and 50 cents. That's when Chicago, I first baby. came to Chicago. That's, Chicago. They don't know what a pop is, Teresa. Explain to them what a pop is, it's please. Soda. Pop is a it's soda. soda. <laughs> it's a soda. We know. <laughs> so, yeah. That's Midwest. That's Chicago all day. A pop, baby. I need a red pop. <laughs> yes, baby. And I would, I'm telling y'all, I had a bottle of water for my second, but the first thing I had was that pop along with that half a sandwich and half the fries. I'm telling you right now, somebody is hungry. So even if it's as simple as you buy buy a little something that double stack and pass it to somebody, do that one deed and feed America today. That God said, feed my sheep. And he wasn't just talking words. Mm. Teresa, have you been writing? Because I know you write a lot of your stuff. And you know, a lot of your lines and your music are so prolific to me that when I'm doing Love, Love Lounge, I stop and I break it down. Because one of my favorite lines, well, you know, my favorite song is uh, Rose Colored Glasses. Rose Col but one of my favorite lines that you do is from I Came Without You when you say, I know it don't sound the same, but my, uh, but my love's running through my veins. There's no escape from you. No matter what you do, because I want you to hold me, baby. That that drug running through my veins, I've had that drug yeah. running. That is why I'm so against love now, because I've experienced such heartache and heartbreak from love. But that song lets me revisit how good it was when it was good. It wasn't a long-lasting good, because I've had my heart broken by a man and a woman. I talk about this publicly. And those words make me go back to when it was a time that I would smile about love. I ain't mm -hmm. fucking with love now because now I ain't scared of a new love, but I'm terrified of that old hurt. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and so we say pop in the UK. So let me tell you what. Oh, I, I that. This, this, this CD has one song in it. Uh, and we've been tampering back and forth with this Bye Bye Love's Gone. Uh, but here's the thing that it does lead you to insane hurt insane closure insane love again if i was looking for the same shit that i was looking for when i first fell out of the plane into love till it hurt me until my soul felt like it fell out till i couldn't walk i couldn't eat i couldn't sleep you know if i were there and I can remember it so well, I can write from it and pull from it no matter how happy I am in my current situation because I know how it feels to be disrespected until your soul falls apart. I know how it feels to give somebody your utter all and you love them beyond themselves until you step beyond you. So I can always write about that because I can totally feel it. I can, I can totally... I know what insanity looks like when you can't even do anything except for apologize for yourself. You know, you don't even know why you're doing it anymore because you are so lost in whatever this feeling is, this glue that made you feel like you were whole for once. And then at the same time, this person has the ability to take the stitches out and just rip it out. You know, mm -hmm. how did I get to this point where I gave so much that you could undo me that way? Um, I can always go there because I know what that feels like. I also have the advantage of knowing what it feels like to have someone have nothing but your pleasure in mind. You know, I, I know how it feels when somebody wants to give you the world and they don't even know what time it is to give it to you. You know, that they're so lost into you that you don't ever want to hurt them because you know that it's fragile. And, um, and so I hope you get to the point that you find exactly, you know, that type of love. Girl, I'm married. Um, I got three, uh, a, a husband and two wives. Baby, I'm good. They Lauren, spend, I'm praying. They spend all my I'm money. I'm praying. I'm praying. <laughs> I'm praying because if you feel that, the respect of it keeps you in line in a whole nother way. No, I absolutely. I mean, and you've dropped a couple of testimonials today, but I think that's part of the reason why, too, like Flame makes fun of me, but... I'm not the type of person that I'm just going to jump into a relationship because I love being alone. I probably enjoy my company a little too much. But with that being said, though, it's like I know what I want. And I also have a phenomenal relationship with my father. He's really 
put me up on a pedestal as, you know, this is, you're my daughter. This is what you should and should not allow for men. Even down to the smallest thing, like a man coming, opening up your door. Okay. I don't care what, I don't care what time it is. It could be 2025. Yeah. You still need to do that. There's just certain requirements that you have to have in order to date me. And I'm not going to settle for less. And that might be still why I'm single. Cause I also didn't want to get in relationships before, but anyway, <laughs> I'm growing and I'm evolving. You know what I mean? And you know, yes. I, I'm open to it now, but there's just a certain standard that I have to your point that I'm, there's just certain shit I'm not going to allow at the end of the day. Yeah. So period. And if, and it may end up being that I get that man that, you know, may treat me right, but end up breaking my heart, but that's mm -hmm. okay though. It's okay. Oh yeah. Because I can tell you I've grown, you know, growth is a, it, growth is painful, but it's but it's OK, you know, it, and sometimes you can grow and it's beautiful. And I think where I am. With my husband, I just want to be a better version of myself and, and not a lot of people make me want to be that, you know, some people make me just want to be the absolute worst version of myself and slap them around. And 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 that already tells you that that's not the one. Mm -hmm. Someone that has you in confusion emotionally all the time, you know, messing with your head, you know, because people like to get up in here when they up in here mm -hmm. and when they messing with your head and they don't know that that your love is fragile. You got to you know, you got to be careful. But I, I say walk in faith and careful. You know, what I used to do is I date, but you can't come in my house, period. You can take me out to dinner. Let me see how you really are. Love a good meal. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Wait, wait, when a father shows a daughter love and how should she be treated, it's hard for a person to manipulate you then because their father have shown them real love and most people don't have that. So they seek, okay, I love that. You know, my dad was my superhero. Play my daddy uh, beat up a white man in the South. Mm -hmm. Back when I was a little kid, because me, they called Bill. Me and your daddy could have rolled together. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all probably could. Because let me tell you something. My daddy was serious about people and he loved everybody. And we grew up in Louisiana, so that tells you a lot. Okay? And, you know, he was like, you don't, you don't get to judge anybody else because I'm sure the brick in your house is bigger. So be careful about walking out there judging people. And I used to, you know, I really loved that about him. But I dig digress. Flame. I want you to know that there is some beautiful love out there for you. It's right here. I love Lauren. I love That's beautiful, too. And I love Kendall. I say I got a couple. This is she with. I got a man and I got a woman. I'm this good. might be a, a lost cause at this point, <laughs> Teresa. Shall. Teresa, I hear you and I appreciate you, but I'm good. Let me tell you something, Teresa. You know what I do love, though? As a, as a woman, and I ain't a woman, but as a woman and as a woman of color, your inspiration. I'm, I can hear how much you have touched Lauren today with your testimony, just with the things that you have said. So I can only imagine for the 278 people that we have on here, how many other women heard you. And I want to talk to you. Thank you for when you talk about those multiple personalities on Tea Time, when Hazel show up and all them other crazy bitches. The, fact, the fact that you have embraced them, because I talk about this on Love Lounge. Teddy Pendergrass said, you can't hide from yourself. Everywhere you go, you see, there you are. But people look in the mirror and they only see that one. You have to see all those people that, that you know live inside of you. And whether they're good, evil, bad, they all are part of you. Once you mm -hmm. embrace all of that, all of that stays with you and you are in control. When you let them take over, then they take over. I love the fact that you know when Hazel won't want her time, you get that bitch her time. When the other oh, personalities yeah. want her time. And if you don't allow yourself... And we all have multiple personalities. They can say what they want. Everybody has different yep. ways that they feel. You have to know that you are the one that's in control, but you have to allot them their time to to come out, or they will come out when you don't want them to, like Jekyll and Hyde. That's so, why I'm in therapy. The, the dog in therapy, too. The dog get multiple personalities? No. <laughs> no, no, but, but that's but why I'm in therapy. You, that's I'm why in she's therapy. in therapy. Yeah. You know, it's good to know all of you. Yeah. It, you thank know? you, Therese. Yeah. I, didn't know, yeah. I didn't know that. Some of, yeah, I'm in some therapy. Some of us. There was a, a cartoon this morning, and I passed it to John because this guy took this chick on a date. You know, she, she Finally, she moved in. That's what happened. And when she, he got up that morning, he was looking for her, and some other ugly woman was in the house. So this man was traumatized because in this cartoon, 
she don't look like who the hell he went to bed with. Well, shit, and, I, I'm, I'm guilty of that, shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> you might be the biggest defender of that one, shit. you know shit. what? You, <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Girl, you open the door yes! for that. I had to step in, shit. <laughs> Slay, I wouldn't even think about this, but okay. But, no. but I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I want to say is, the most, the, the biggest thing that I really have appreciated about you today, Miss Teresa Griffin, is your authenticity. Um, I don't think we've ever really gotten to talk like this. You know, I hear phenomenal things about you, obviously, but I appreciate your authenticity and your candor at the end of the day, because you know you were a little vulnerable today. So I appreciate it, and I do have to come to Chicago and see you. And Ayanna so. Van Zant, move around, because okay. Teresa, you got something that you need yeah. to take on the road. You can yeah. motivationally speak for uh, for an hour and then sing your face off for another two hours. Girl, you know how much money is in that, John? Period. Woo. That's a check. That is a major uh, check. And you already got an attorney, so. And you already have a you band. You're already there. You're I already have there. an attorney, but you, you know what? Um, you know when I look, get on stage, Teresa takes over, as you know, Flame. That's a whole nother monster. You know, I I, I have to divide. Today, we don't have the music going. I, I lose myself in tea time sometime because I am having a really great time in my kitchen and I just so happen to have a camera on. That's how I act. As you know, these crazy people all live here, including Hazel. And my husband knows that she lives here. So when she talking, he don't even bother with her. <laughs> to, to, I'm so serious. I swear, my husband is so good. Flame knows. He knew, which is why it took him probably eight years to say, well, you marry me. He knew that he was getting all of these. And when I first started dating him, I said, I'm bipolar. So I need you mm. to go do some research to make sure this is what you want to deal with. Because any one of us decide to show up for the motherfucking day, just show up. Yeah. <laughs> just... Teresa, you um, are, are just a, a inspirer. Yeah. You are a loved woman. And if you are, if you all have never seen Teresa Griffin live on stage, what you see on Tea Time is not even... A, a one on a scale of to a hundred because she sings her ass off, she cooks her ass off, but live, like she said, when you're on stage and that audience and that rush, this help her sing upside down and sound good. I'm telling you. That's a real artist. When baby. You sound better live. Baby, That's live and just clear the voice. And I always use the tease. So I say, bitch, who in your throat? Because <laughs> Teresa will open her mouth and you know, like Jennifer Holiday make all of it, I don't know, like she having a stroke or Bill palsy. <laughs> Teresa don't do that. She just opened her mouth and I was like, girl, who in there? It just comes out so effortlessly. And I used to be like, bitch, it's somebody in your throat. Where the tape recorder at? But Teresa, you mentioned your piano song from the Naked Soul CD. I can't play piano, and we don't have piano. But I bet you you won't give me a couple of bars of that before we leave. Now you, you can start to off at the beginning. You yeah. can start off at the beginning, but you got to get to my favorite part when you scream. Oh my God! Uh, <laughs> Not when you scream. <laughs> he walked into the room like many times before, but something's different now. I've never seen before. No kisses graced my lips. They stopped a month before. I thought that this would pass, but you say that love's no more. Did you think that I yes, Jesus. wouldn't cry? And did you think that I wouldn't die inside Did you think That I Wouldn't lose my mind When you said You didn't love me Anymore That's the song y'all Woo! What's the, and the name of that song is Anymore. It's the first song on the Naked Soul CD, but she gets to a part at the end where she gets to scream. I'm not, I only want you to do it now. Y'all go listen to it. They got to go listen to it. Shoot. Now yeah. you got to go download so, yeah. the CD on iTunes, Spotify, Apple, Teresa Griffin, whatever you need to do. You need to hear it. You need to hear it with the piano. I need you all, if you are within 100 miles of Chicago, March 26th and March 27th, stop and be a part of the Wonderful Woman Weekend. We have a boudoir pajama party. Uh, on the 26th and then on mm, the 27th at lunch, we're having a bling slipper brunch. 
So you can Cute. wear oh, anything you want, bring your blank slippers. Wait yes. a minute, where? Where's the location for it? It's at the Hilton Hotel in Oak Lawn. So we, we've got some rooms. And all you have to do is uh, call the hotel and get your own room. And then we have the stuff online. So if you just go to my page and hit my bio here and in Instagram, you can go to the thing and read all about the weekend. Bring your girlfriends. Get drunk for a weekend. Turn up. Y'all can be it. four deep in a room. Four deep in a room. It don't matter. It's, it's, a, it's an all women's review, right? Uh, you know what? No, it's it's trans girls too. No, I'm not yeah. even talking about that. I'm just saying no men. Uh, if they're gay, yes. If they're not, no. What What about if they play gay just for the weekend? I know some of them. Have some imposters <laughs> trying to sneak in and get them a little taste. Look, <laughs> no, look, we go. No, we'll know. Now you know real girls, honey. You you spot their asses a mile away. <laughs> we won't. We ain't gonna be having none of that, Ladies, your brother. Teresa, your brother, I, I, you I must tell you, your brother, so. I've been knowing you. I've known you twenty years, and this interview taught me some things that I didn't even know. With the Jerry Butler thing, with the living in the car, and I've known you twenty years, and we talk about everything. But I love that you, like Lauren said, you were so transparent. You shared so many jewels today, and we appreciate you. The world needs to know you, and guess what? The world will know you because the higher my star rise, you know. I'm a bitch that will drag another bitch. Come on, bitch. Let's go. You got to see this. You got to take this one. I'm real pushy like that. Lauren always tell me, you can't take everybody. I don't say that to that you. So well, not everybody. She, but you. I like, just say you can't take certain people with you. Certain people need to stay their ass. Thank you. Home. Thank you. Well, she wasn't talking about you. I know who she talking about. Real wasn't you. I know <laughs> she wasn't talking about me. I know you know she I wasn't, wasn't talking, talking about, about you. So. You know, T.T. T.T. got your back, boo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Teresa, you were so wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, you can join Teresa T Griffin every Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time on, you say it, because I'm always fucking it up. E360 TV. E360 TV at 6 o'clock p.m. You can join me, oh, or you can just pop on on Facebook and get you a fake page on Facebook and just watch me on there. t timers be talking like y'all, John. <laughs> and and so many of our fans share our love, and we share love back with them because we share fans. And I appreciate your fans loving Flame Monroe and the Flame Mess loving the Tea Timers and Teresa Griffin. Teresa, this oh, was awesome. Yes, you were amazing. You are beautiful. <laughs> you are talented. You are a woman phenomenally. I think when she when uh what's her name who wrote Phenomenal Woman. Uh, oh, Maya oh. Angelou. When yes. Maya Angelou wrote it, she may have wrote it for Oprah. But Oprah's name was just the top. So many other names fell up under that. And bitch, you are number one right up under mm -hmm. there. Yes, indeed. Yes. I love you. I love you. You know I love you. He, she, we. Oh. He, she, we. He, she, we better go make a check. He, she, we. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, this was so awesome. Thank yes. you so much. And we, you know, I'm gonna do Love Lounge tonight. We are gonna play a little. You know, we always play a little TG. If you have not, heard, yeah. if, if you in the gym or you working out, you are trying to get your body right, you need some inspiration to clean. Teresa Griffin has a house version of her song Wonderful. You can download on iTunes, Spotify, Apple. If you not, if you not in the mood to dance, God damn it, this one gonna get you up off the couch. It will make you dance. It make you wash <laughs> dishes faster and mop and everything. Just don't play it while having sex because somebody's going to try to keep the beat. And it's, you know, oh, Lord. Somebody's going to have a stroke. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Teresa Griffin. We love Thank you. We you. love Mwah. you. I love, love you, Laugh Teresa. Thank you. Learn. Laugh and yeah. learn, baby. Ladies Laugh and gentlemen, and we learn. have had the most With wonderful. He, she, we. He, she, we. He, she, we. <laughs> ah, you don't know about that he, she, we, Teresa. <laughs> 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 right, I agree with that. Lauren what? need to be. Uh, Teresa could do an AHF event. Oh yeah, I'll keep you in mind. You know I work with talent. That's part of my job. So I'll call look. you, girl. And she said, right, she signed the big checks, Teresa. Okay, look. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Love you, Teresa. I'll talk to you guys. I love you too, baby. I'll talk to y'all later. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having, for just coming in and just loving on Teresa Griffin. You guys follow her on her page and please spell her name correctly because she will fight me. T-E-R-I-S-A underscore Griffin on Instagram and T-E-R-I-S-A G-R-I-F-F-I-N on Facebook. Come on. Uh, see, All right, look I'm, at you. I'm, I'm good today. Yes, my, I got my smart hair. I, I got my smart hair, but I got a smart phone. But please don't buy me another smart phone. Could y'all could y'all got a new phone line called the dumb no, phone? I need no. a dumb phone. I have not figured out this iPhone yet. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, well, thank you guys for joining us today. This was such a, an we, amazing interview. We did not even talk about it's the okay. case, and I don't want to talk about week, the case. Because we this, was, this was good. Yeah, we this don't want to take it life. anywhere else. Yes. 
This was a good one. Inspiring. Yes. Are you inspired? I, I feel very inspired. You, I like, Lord, can I just say, I love your fucking hair like this. Thank you. I didn't do it today. I but know, but so I like much. it like, no, with whatever you, the braids and took it down. Yeah. It does look like braids. Yeah, oh, yeah, I did. It, but I it's pretty. Braid. Thank you, you, look, you so you much. You look black. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Okay. That you usually look other. <laughs> other? Okay, I'll take other. that. That's, that's fair. <laughs> that's, that's what fair. I sign on applications. Black, white, o- other. other. <laughs> Sex, male, female, other. Oh, it was <laughs> always other. <laughs> Oh my At Laugh Alarm, we have had such a great time. Thank you so much, ladies. Flame Mats, thank you for being part of the show. We know we, know we didn't bring none of y'all in, but Teresa had the... She, we didn't need to. Her conversation was, on was her. powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Kendall, thank you, our wonderful cameraman, Thanks, for being Kendall. here. Kendall. Take it, Lauren. Are we saying our motto? We, yes, honey, we are. Oh, at Laugh and Learn, we have a motto, and that's we are not trying to get anybody to change your mind. We are simply trying to get you to use your mind. And Why? In order, to, in order to use your mind, you have to slide your wig back and have one. Thank Ooh, you very much. The wig's coming off. I think we got to <laughs> sign off now. Oh, goodness. It's time to sign off. Thank you for joining us here at Laugh and Learn, ladies and gentlemen. You can follow Lauren Hogan at on Instagram at Lauren Armani H. And please, on Facebook, follow Lauren Hogan and Flay Monroe. I mean, shit, at Lauren. But so don't follow my Facebook. I don't get on that. No. You can follow me on YouTube, though, because that's, that's where I, I upload all these episodes. And also our Laugh and Learn podcast um, page as well on Instagram. On Instagram. And you yeah. can follow Lauren. Make sure you subscribe to Lauren Hogan's YouTube page. Do you know I got 200 um, subscribers on YouTube now? See, good. I feel so established. I had to fight her to get a YouTube page. Yeah, because I had to fight. I had to get one, too. So shit. I'm not a social media <laughs> person. So anyway. I had to fight the Black Effect Network. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> and we can, you can follow Flame <laughs> um, on Instagram at Monroe Flame and on Facebook at Marcus Flame Monroe Parker, uh, full full name, and then on YouTube at Flame Monroe. Yes, and we thank you for joining us. Uh, such a great show, such an inspiration to talk to Teresa Griffin. Mm-hmm. Please get her music. If you have not heard Teresa or have not seen her, I'm telling you right now, it's like you wouldn't believe it. It's a phenomenon. And she entertains. She dresses up and she carries on. And right titty is always an issue. But if you're straight and you like titties, you should go to the show just for that. That right <laughs> that, titty going to be That's sane. a good incentive. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We're signing off. We appreciate you. We will see you all next week. Peace. Have a great week. Laugh and Learn is a production of the Black Effect Network and iHeartRadio. Our executive producer is Tiffany Haddish. Our theme music is by Chrissy Payne.